it's a Saturday night. This is a Saturday night patty of Thailand. And I'm on the back of a motorbike right now. And I'm headed over towards the Central Festival. It's the mall. Basically right in the center of everything. It's between Second Road and Beach Road. And you know, if you don't know where you're gonna start your night, just tell the taxi, you know, take me to Central. And the Thai folks, they pronounce it Sintan. So you just say it by Sintan. But I'm going to Padia Central Festival. And then I'm gonna take a walk. And I'm gonna go eat some Mexican food. And I think some people find that hard to believe. You know, mid Thailand, mid Padia party spot. That, that's what everybody thinks it is. And it is. It's a vacation spot. But all I think about is food. And I eat Thai food every day. So every now and then I have to change it up a little bit. And, you know, I, I love Mexican food. And there are a few, well, there's two Mexican restaurants that I go to. And I saw one more the other day while I was riding through. But the one I'm probably going to go to tonight, it's on Soy 7, near Patia Central Festival. And Soy 7's got a lot of bars and stuff, so it's good to people watch. You can sit there. I like to sit outside at uh, Tequila Reef is the name of it. You know, there's a Tequila Reef in Angeles City. There's a Tequila Reef here in Patia. They used to be affiliated, but I think they're not anymore still the same name but on soy seven there's a lot of bars you can uh, I like to sit on the porch at tequila reef and just drink my margarita and eat, eat uh, some good Mexican food and just watch traffic go by you know and I don't, I don't uh, folks I might seem like the big party guy which if, if I have occasion I certainly am but I don't go to these go-go's and these bars and stuff like that and hang out like I used to. Uh, it's only when I'm meeting friends or meeting acquaintances, stuff like that, that I go to these spots. So it's a Saturday night and basically what I'm dreaming of right now is some food. And from there I might go sit somewhere and just do a little people watching, but I'm rolling solo tonight. I don't have any. Um, I, I don't have any buddies in town right now, so I'm not thinking of partying. I'm just thinking about getting some food and maybe do a little people watching. At one in the morning, I think it is UFC's coming on. So I think it's from Russia. I'm not. I can't remember where they're fighting. Yeah, I think it's in Russia. 1 a.m. got UFC coming on, so I'll be I'll be watching the fights. This road we're on right now. Uh, this is Patty Atai, and we're headed towards the beach. Traffic in this town. Traffic in this town on a Saturday, Saturday night, Friday night, it's like any other town in the world. It's heavy traffic. Again, I'm, if all this footage makes it makes it into the video, uh, I hope you're at least a little bit entertained. You know, some people never been here, so a good motorbike ride kind of show you the sights of what I see on, during my travels from point A to point B. Thailand has changed a lot in many ways. Um, Thailand used to be very, very uh, free and non-regulated. 
But Thailand has developed now. There's a lot more people here. There's a lot more going on. It's not, you know, you got to have regulation. It goes along with it. So I guess I'm, I'm telling a long story to say it's not it's not acceptable nor recommended, you know, to uh, drink beer and then jump on the motorbike. You know, back in back in the day, I mean, it's just just the way it was. Nobody cared, right? But now, you know, there's police checkpoints everywhere. They do have alcohol sensors, just like they do in the West, and you will go to jail for DUI here. I highly recommend that if you're going to come here, uh, if you if you do run a motorbike, don't be drinking. Okay, and if you're going to if you're going to drink, do not get on the motorbike. I mean, it's common sense. And you know, if I if I think I'm going to have a beer, even fathom it, I'm I'm just going to take a motorbike. It's three bucks, two three dollars. I don't got to worry about it. Now, like I said, 10 years ago, 20, 30, 40, you know, if you were here back in the 60s, the 70s, okay, it's a, that's a different era, my friends. 10 years ago was a different different era here. Um, but now, you know, there's, you can't take beer on a bus, on a train. And you damn sure don't want to find yourself rolling through a police checkpoint when you've had a few beers. It's going to cost you a lot of money just like it does in the West. So anyhow, that's why I'm taking I'm taking a motorbike taxi. I'll get over here, have me a margarita, maybe a couple beers, take a motorbike taxi home, and I'm uh, planning a low-key night. However, Trouble always seems to find me for some reason. It's minding my own business last week, having a beer. And some drunk, ball headed, fat guy with a tank top. And a typical broke ass tourist or expat. The, the tank top, the, the raggedy cargo shorts, and the flip flops, the big belly, the ball head, the million tattoos. Guy just started yelling at me for some reason. I'm not even sure what happened. Well, I know what happened. He was a drunk, coked up asshole. But instead of causing any problems, I just moved my uh, I just moved my operation to another table. This little baby girl is so cute. I just moved my operation to another table, and the guy got up and followed me. And started yelling at me again. And so at that point, I said, you know what, just give me the check. I'm out of here. Security came over, started talking to the dude. The guy was whacked out of his mind. And, you know, I did nothing wrong. Trust me, if I did something wrong, I'd tell you. But I did absolutely nothing wrong. And I left. And then after I left... The redneck in me kicked in, and I said, wait a minute, I just let this bastard ruin me out of a bar, and I didn't do nothing. So I was going back in there to the girl I was with, a friend of mine, you know, talked me, talked me into it, said, look, let's just, let's go to this other spot, it's better anyhow. And she saved me from any drama. But deep, you know, deep down, I'm a redneck, and have a few beers you know it's just not your nature to back down from some asshole like that but again I'm getting older and wiser I'm trying to make wiser decisions so uh, getting closer over here come to a little bar area A lot of people, you know, a lot of people, they have these niche channels where all they do is go around and film the bars and the bar girls and all that. And, you know, they get a lot of views, a lot of subscribers. And, you know, let's face it, any marketing, marketing person will tell you, you know, sex sells just the way it is. It's reality. 
and I discussed this with a buddy why why I don't do this folks every day if I wanted to I could go sit in a different bar every day two three hours of video of nothing but you know tits and ass but that's not what, that's not what my channel or my vision's about I mean this is this is really about my life as an expat and world traveler and so at first I purposely didn't post any videos with girls but then I said wait a minute man you're sanitizing who you are and what you do so what I want people to understand is that this is reality about what I do and I'm not ashamed of what I do where I go but uh <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not ashamed of where I go, what I do, but I, but this is who I am. I don't purposely come over here to these beer bars, you know, and sit up in here every night just so I can get footage. I don't do that. All right, this is the bar complex here, on the way to uh, to Central, which Central is right there. That's the Hilton Hotel up there on top of Central. It's a little bar complex right here. You know, in the decade I've been coming here, I've hung out here many, many nights. Look at that pig right there. Ooh, that's delicious. A lot of good food in this little alley. It's Saturday night, so everything's cranking. But what I was saying, folks, is what, what my channel's about, it's, it's just about my travels. So if I go to a bar and get stupid, I'm gonna share that with you. But that, but I'm not, I don't, I'm not in search of bars, bar girls, chasing views just because, you know, I can go to these bars. If you see me in a bar, it's because I had a reason to go there, or I, I got a crazy itch, or I got drunk and did something stupid. You know, if you're looking for a channel to just look at those bar girls that I showed you back there, there's plenty of them. I mean, it's literally, you know, probably thousands thousand channels that's all they do is go around Southeast Asia sitting in bars and you know playing with hookers and all that but this is Central Festival right here and this is where I'm gonna get off and give this gentleman Hunter bot about three bucks and then I'm gonna take you for a walk so let me snap this in okay my friend cop on cop chody crap Okay, so let me just show you around a couple things here. Now, the gentleman let me off here at Central, but right, right back there is right across the street is is Patty and Night Bazaar. So if you're looking for some souvenirs, um, you just cross over the street to the left over there. You're looking for some souvenirs. It's a touristy souvenir type stuff. And you can get it cheaper in the night markets, obviously. But if you're pressed for time or just don't want to mess with it, walk over there to that patty and night bazaar. And they got all stuff from soaps to, uh, you know, little wood carved elephants, all the typical, the Thai t you know, Thailand t shirts, all that stuff over there. And it's pretty reasonable. Like I said, you can look around and try to get it cheaper. But when I'm when I'm pressed to get out of here for a flight and I need, you know, 10, 10 gifts in the Phil for the Philippines, what they call Pasalubon, I just go right over there, pick out 10 things. What we're gonna do, this road right here, the traffic running in front of me, this is second road. And if you cut one block that way, you're at the beach. And these are one-way roads. Second road runs this direction. And if you go down to Beach Road, it runs the other direction. And these bot buses right here, they just run a racetrack. They just, it's like they're at a NASCAR race. They're just turning, turning left. It's, it's, uh, it's Timbot, if you've never been here before. It's Timbot, about 30 US cents. You jump on, you jump on the bot bus, and you get off wherever you want to on the on the racetrack. 
This gentleman right here got some fruit. Folks, I know this is wobbly, but I'm testing it out because I've got it. I've got the iPhone clipped to my Indiana gear bag because I'm just trying to test it to see if it'll work without me having to hold it. You know, you walk some of these areas, people aren't real cool with a camera. And like I said before, I got it. Okay, now this, this soy right here, this is soy 8. And let's see, down, yeah, down, down Soy 8 is a uh, good restaurant called the Sailor Bar. I may take you over there later. Yeah, down to, down to the Mexican restaurant over there. Pretty good food. A little people watching on Soy 7. And this is Central right here. This is Central Festival. And again, the, the Hilton Hotel is right on top. Looks like they're shutting down the stage. I guess they had a stage going on today. Well, here's just a look around. In front of Central right here, and there's a Starbucks. What would we do without a Starbucks? And so, I'm gonna head on down Walking Street. It'll take you on a little, take you on a little ride across Walking Street. And there's a little Irish bar right here called Mulligans. Looks like they're watching football right there. But this is a Irish pub and restaurant. Pretty cool little place. Used to sit out there every now and then, but again, if you're one of those dudes that's got to stay at the Hilton, okay, right here is your Hilton. And here's this little Irish bar. Alright, so I'm going to walk in the direction of Walker Street. And again, if you've never been here, this is Beach Road. One way traffic. So if you're on Beach Road, you're headed towards Walker Street. If you go on the flow of traffic. Little 7-Eleven. Here in Thailand. It's never 7-Eleven within farther than that. I don't know, say 50 meters. The old saying is, where do you open a 7-Eleven? And the answer is, right across the street from an existing 7-Eleven. That's what I've always been told. That's what they seem to do. Excuse me. So, just taking a little walk. Swap over there to to the beach side, but 
the ladies of the night aren't real keen with cameras coming down through there. And what they call the girls that hang out over here, not so much anymore, but like back in the day, even 10 years ago, I mean, there were so many girls hanging out there, over there on the, on the beach that they call them coconut girls. That's what they're still called. But it's nowhere near like back in the day. But all these girls that are hanging out over there underneath the coconut trees, they call them coconut girls. Because they don't work at a bar. Some people say, what bar you work at? They would say, coconut bar. Because it's underneath the coconut trees. And we got some spots in here for souvenirs, touristy type stuff. And I'm right here at Soy 10. I figured you would find this a little bit more interesting. Got all kind of suitcases if you want them in there. Muay Thai gear. Beachwear, t-shirts. I don't know, maybe you would find the coconut girls more interesting. Yeah, the souvenir shops. <laughs> I don't know, but this is the side that I'm walking on, so this is the view you're getting. What I'm thinking about doing is walking down here to Hooters and having a beer or two. And folks, anywhere else in the world, Here's a little subway right here. It's a little subway. Right there. Kind of a cute place. Anywhere else in the world, if somebody said, hey man, you wanna to go to Hooters? I would say, hell no, of course not. I don't wanna to go to Hooters. Why in the hell would I wanna to go to Hooters? But the Hooters here in Patia is actually nice. And what they've done is designed a pretty cool bar. In a pretty cool location they got a mechanical bull in there which I rode before when I was inebriated they got a mechanical bull a band the place is just laid out really nice and so I may have said it in a previous video that it doesn't matter what the name of the bar is, if it's called Hooters or Marco's Place or whatever. It's just a nice layout for a bar. And then I don't go there to eat because the food is Hooters food. You know, typical Hooters food is not anything to write home about. But if you're in Patia, you know, I would say go have a drink or two at the Hooters because it's just a nice atmosphere. The girls are friendly and they're also from multiple nationalities. It's not just Thai, Thai girls. You'll have, uh, you'll have uh, Filipino girls in there, girls from, I don't know, just uh, all over Russia. So it's a very international Hooters. You get different girls, different languages, different cultures. Pretty neat. And this right here is Mike Shopping Mall. If you're looking for some bargains, it's like several floors of clothing. I've been in there several times, but it's not where I shop. But you can get some bargains in there. All right, so I'm continuing forward through this maze of uh, souvenirs and stuff right here. You know, and you got hats, t-shirts. Holy crap. Oh, look at that corn over there, folks. That looks delicious right there, that corn. What they do, they mix it up with a little sugar, a little carnation milk, I don't know what else, but it, they'll give it to you in a cup, and that corn is delicious. It's more like a dessert. You know, most kids in the West don't give a shit about corn. But I promise you, if you gave them a cup of that corn, they would eat it. It's like a dessert. All right, got a little two-man band going on here. Well, one man, one woman. Sidewalk bar. And he's steaming some corn right here. 
and got jean shorts for 100 baht. That's actually a good deal. Three bucks for those jean shorts. No, thank you, my friend. So, no, thank you, my friend. This is the Tahitian Queen. And this bar right here is supposedly the oldest bar. Holy crap, hit the picture sign. So this is supposedly the oldest bar in Patia. Okay, this is Tahitian Queen. Couple cup. So, I, I don't know if that's true or not. It seems to be the oldest bar, first go-go. And it's right here on Beach Road. And if, if you're into that type of activity, if you're if you're into that type of activity, I recommend in the afternoon you go to Tahitian Queen and have a few drinks. I mean, for several reasons, it's supposedly the oldest bar, the first go-go, but it's a great afternoon bar. I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful girls in there. Great service. Aircon's cold. If you're worried about aircon, it's freezing cold in there. And I would almost tell you this: that if you go in there wearing shorts, it's gonna freeze your ass off. But it's a great bar, Tahitian Queen. Let's take a look back where we just came from. It's right there. And then, folks, this is Hooters right here. Usually I sit right out here, and that's probably where I'm going. Probably gonna have one beer. I'm gonna sit right out here, do a little people watching. But this is the Hooters. I'm gonna take a picture of it. Right here. And it's probably the only Hooters in the world that this guy recommends. So I'm just gonna go sit here have me one drink right here and just watch some folks go by and it looks like a packed house in there so I'll come over here and have me a seat right here next to the Hooters sign sweaty crap okay folks so I'm right here on the perch at Hooters and right next to a 7-eleven and a Starbucks and not the greatest place in the world that people watch, but you do have you do have a lot of traffic coming through here. A lot of foot traffic and the iPhone is so dark that you can't really see over there on uh, the coconut bar side. The iPhone is not a wonderful piece of gear at nighttime low light. They still need to improve on that, but you gotta understand that you're filming with a cell phone with a small sensor the sensor from what I understand I'm not a professional photographer but you gotta have a bigger sensor to let more light in so we'll do the best we can just sitting here watching traffic go by just drink one or two beers and I'm gonna flip it around here for a second and talk to you so uh you can see behind me, this place is a, is a pretty cool, pretty cool bar. I mean, it's laid out nice. Like I said, they got a band, they got a mechanical bull. They usually have the sporting events, and all the girls are friendly, beautiful, and um, you know, from multiple countries, multiple uh, areas of the globe, to so make for some interesting conversation. Back before I figured out how to get UFC, I, I used to have to come here and watch the UFC fights. I had to get up early in the morning, get here like eight, nine. They would, at least in the past, they would open up for uh, early for UFC. So now I don't have to. I figured out how to watch the UFC fights. But before, this is where I used to come. Come to this Hooters, get up early in the morning. But anyhow. Look for uh, a nice bar, friendly people, good atmosphere. Believe it or not, I do recommend the Hooters. And here you go. You see stuff like this, right? Now, people talk about Patia. 
usually when they you hear the word patio, it's often the negative light. But folks, there are so many cool things about Patia, Thailand that has nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do with the uh, bar girls, the ladies of the night, whatever you want to call it. So many different interesting things here. So many excellent restaurants, uh, tourist attractions, food, street food. I'm going to tell you right now, the street food scene here in Pattaya is better than it is in Bangkok. I don't care what you say. The food here is better, cheaper, fresher. And so anybody that thinks coming to Pattaya is not a good choice because, you know, there's nothing but go-go bars and stuff like that here, that's fucking bullshit. Okay, this place has changed. And now it's... You know, Russian families, Russian families pushing strollers, Chinese tour groups. It's a it's a melting pot of just whoever and whatever culture. Um, I, I guess I'm trying to say that this is probably one of the most international places in the world. Right here. I mean, I can sit here and people watch and I can video who goes by. And you're going to see China, Russia, India, Bangladesh, um, the Middle East, Europe, United States. I mean, in this place, every day of my life when I'm here in Pattaya, I'm, I listen to, if I'm just walking down the street, I could probably listen to no less than 15 different languages on a daily basis. Now... There's some ladies over there that are, uh, those are probably Russian girls over there. Headed to Walking Street, beautiful ladies. I've never had any luck dealing with the Russian girls. I can't figure them out. Oops. Cop on cop. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, folks, so I got me a beer right here. This beautiful, beautiful Thai girl just brought it to me. And I'm telling you, she is an absolute stunner. Every one of them here are just beautiful, beautiful ladies. Now, I'm gonna tell you this. I think probably every American male at one point in his life has probably dreamed about dating a Hooters girl. And I'm not gonna name any names. But I did fulfill that little fantasy for a period of my life. And how do I put it lightly? Sweet girl in many ways, but one of the craziest bitches I've ever, that's ever been around me in my presence. And if you know me, you know who she is. And if you're watching, you know who you are. So folks, when you go to a Hooters, all right, don't hit on the Hooters girls. Because trust me, <laughs> that's not a tiger that you want to grab by the tail. It's just not. So, I got the phone turned around. So, everybody that walks by, they're looking at my screen. They're seeing me and they're like, what the hell is he doing? But what I do, I shoot from the front-facing camera so I can shoot 4K. And if you shoot from the other camera where I can see myself, I'm only shooting 1080. So a lot of times, if I'm not in frame or whatever, I can't tell. I'm just kind of estimating where I think it should be, and I hope that it's working. But the funny thing is, when people walk by, they see the screen, unless I, you know, kill the brightness, which I should. But anyhow. So yeah, if you come with Hooters, don't don't think you're you're picking up on the Hooters girls and getting laid. All right. And. You know, beautiful girls, but in my experience, not ones you want to move in with you, that's for damn sure. So I'm going to sit here and sip on this Heineken. We'll just pick a subject and start talking about it. Maybe I'll put this shit on a, maybe I'll put it on my little ready cam mount. No need for the tripod. And we'll just sit here and watch folks walk by. You know, just sit. Maybe I set it right here. 
Well, if I set it right there, I don't, I don't think we can see much of anybody coming by. I need to push it out there. Well, we'll sit here and watch traffic like that. How's that angle? Let me talk to you a minute about my subscribers. Over a thousand subscribers now. I think that's like the, the biggest milestone. I'm trying to start a YouTube channel and get to a thousand. And once you get to a thousand, I'm not saying it's going to be easy to get to the second thousand, but I think it's like the way, it, like, you know, they say it's hardest to make your first million, then it's easier to make the second and third and fourth million. Anyhow, I don't give a shit about that. I just want to say thanks to everybody that subscribed to my channel and watched my, my carnage and my drunkenness and my cursing and my, my cooking skills. I really appreciate you guys subscribing and watching my stuff. So this is where we're at. I'm Patty of Thailand at the Hooters. Now I'm gonna finish this beer. I'm gonna take it down to Walking Street. I'm gonna walk all the way down Walking Street and come all the way back up Walking Street. And my goodness, those girls are absolutely beautiful. And the thing about Walker Street, you know, with these go-go's and stuff, the security doesn't like for you to point the camera at the girls, and I understand that. But they're not really professional or gentlemen about it. I mean, sometimes you'll be just trying to take a selfie or something. Next thing you go, you got two bouncers shining flashlights at you, trying to be Billy Badass. So I'm going to walk down the street. I'm not going to focus left or right on anybody at and, you know, to be honest, I, I don't go to Walker Street. I don't come to Walker Street. And, and unless I've got friends here that, you know, want to go over to Walker Street, I, I don't go there. But I do like, you know, every now and then when I pop into town, I like to go over there just to see what's changed. And so I said, you know what? I'm gonna come get some Mexican food. I'm gonna do a little people watching at Hooters, and then I'm gonna take take my folks up and down Walking Street, cause I just want to see what's what what what's what's changed at night. And the trend here is every it's, it seems to me like every time a go go closes, it'll open back up as a clothing store, a pharmacy, a coffee shop. I mean, that, that go-go scene on Walker Street's on its way out. It's slowly crumbling. I'm sure there'll always be a few holdouts, but um, Walker Street is turning more into, ah, what the hell is the name of that place in Fort Lauderdale? I don't want to say Beale Street in North New Orleans because everybody thinks hookers when you say Beale Street. <coughs> but it's turning more into a, a you know, just a tourist, a party area. I mean, all the locals, you know, go over to, have been over on Soy Bacow for years now. You know, it's not too far from here. But Soy Bacow, Soy LK Metro is like the, the I don't want to say new because it's been over there a long time, but that's like the equivalent of Walker Street probably 10, 20 years ago. You know, nothing but go-go's and bars over there. And this walking street over here, the main walking street, is just slowly seems to be fading out. You know, with different attractions geared at the, the typical family tours. And again, folks, I don't give a shit either way. I don't care either way, because my ass don't go over there. There's a hell of a lot more patty of Thailand than, than Beach Road and walking street. And it's funny because... It's funny because... I was in this bar a while back, and this young buck, I say young buck, he's about 25, sitting in a bar, he's kind of complaining about Patia, you know, the only thing there is to do is sit in a bar and, and uh, you know, deal with the bar girls, and I'm like, dude, that's, that's not true, and then he wanted to argue with me, I've been here, you know, I've been here four times. I'm not going to argue with the dude. Dudes like that, they're not going to listen to you either way. But 
he swore up and down his four times and his expertise of coming to patio. All there was to do was to go to go-go bars. I said, dude, you're just a typical tourist. A typical tourist has seven days. He gets a room over here close to Beach Road, close to Second Road. You know, during the day he gets a gets some massages, and then at night runs Walking Street. And they don't leave like a, like literally a, you know, 15 block radius. Well, that's like me going to New Orleans and getting a hotel room on or near Bill Street and never leaving. And then I go try to tell everybody that the only thing New Orleans has to offer is, is fucking bars and go-go's and hookers. You know, a lot of people, when they come here, they're pressed for time, they don't leave this area. And so that's their perspective, their impression. But I'm here to tell you that it's such a small part of what this region has to offer. I don't even want to publicize it because then there's going to be more people come over here. But, um, I'm sorry, a dude had a, a ball headed dude had a scorpion tattooed on the side of his head. Hey, to each his own. But what I try to tell this dude, I said, man, if, yeah, you could come here for six months and go see something different every day that has nothing to do with girls or bars or drinking, and you still can see everything that this place has to offer. I mean, 30 minutes from where I'm sitting right now, there's, there's two water parks, there's a winery, you know, there's uh, just all kind of different attractions, wonderful restaurants. But you know, if you go to any place and just hang out you know, in the bar area, well, that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get, you, if you hang out in the bar areas, that's all you're gonna see is fucking bars. Come on, it's logic. This dipshit gonna argue with me. I just let him, like, whatever, dude. Whatever, you'll come back again next year on your fucking seven day vacation. And you'll stay on Beach Road and go to Walker Street every night, and then you'll go back and badmouth Patio. Go right ahead. But this region really is, it really is an interesting place. You know, if you're, you're coming here to, to party, well, come to party, but all these Russian folks around here, they're not here to party. They're here with their wives and kids or pushing strollers up and down the beach. So there's just, there's so much stuff to do here that, um, that's the videos I'm gonna make, because that's where I go. Like tomorrow, I think I'm gonna take you guys down to the winery. It's a, it's a perfect little day motorbike tour. Um, I've taken several folks when they come here. It's a great day, folks. It has nothing to do with drinking other than when you get to the winery, you do get to sample the wine. So I'm probably gonna take you guys down there tomorrow. So check out the next video. I'm gonna take you to some temples. I'm gonna take you to a lake. We're gonna feed some fish. Go to the, uh, we may not go on the actual winery tour, but I'm gonna show you the place and we will sample some wine. And you're gonna love it. So if I had a choice, like like back in the day, I think Patio was like, if you're broke, you go to Patio. If you're rich, you go to Phuket. But I'm gonna tell you, if you know what I know about Patio, not, not Walking Street, not Beach Road, but the entire region, Chambury, if you had a choice, you would have a much better time if you came to Patio than if you went to Phuket, Chiang Mai, all these other places, they're overrated compared to this region. And people can think what they want to think, but there are so many things to do within 30 minutes from where I'm sitting. Nothing to do with drinking or, or bar girls or go-go bars. That's like 1% of what this region has to offer. But all you fuckers sitting there watching me, that's gonna argue with me down in the comments and give me a thumbs down. Because you came here four times for a week on vacation and you know it all. 
Well, just leave your shit down there. Leave your garbage down there. I don't really give a fuck. I'm not going to ban you. Say what you want to say. Okay? But I, unless, you're, unless you're an old-timer, if you're an old-timer, you know the same shit I do. But if you're some young buck who's been here a few times, think you fucking know everything, uh, you don't. I've been around these parks a long time, and I've done a lot of exploring around these parks. That's a long fucking conversation to say, hey, if you come to Thailand, come to Patia, and spend some time here. You're going to love it. Unless you stay around the goddamn go-go bar for seven to ten days straight. Lose all your money. All right, folks. Well, kind of busy for a... uh, Saturday night in the low season. I mean, we're just, you know, next month going to get into the high season here. But well, it seems to be quite a, quite a few folks out here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a break from running my trap. Maybe I bored you to death. Maybe you're asleep. But either way, I want, I want to say thanks for joining me. And if you haven't subscribed in the, see, it's my left. Let me make sure I get this right. The bottom right hand corner of your screen, you're gonna see this little white sign, it's the overstay road sign. Click on that, subscribe. This is pretty much what you get. You get stuff from my travels, cooking shows. You know, I like to travel, drink beer, barbecue, do all that shit, and none of my shows are scripted. It's whatever I feel like doing that day, and whatever I, whenever I feel like pulling out the damn iPhone and hitting record. Okay, I got a Patreon page set up. I'm trying to get to $1 million per month. Right now, I'm up to $2 per month. Boom! Only $999,998 left to go. And once I hit a million, what's going to happen is I'm going to hire a film crew. We're going to kick off a really no-shit professional travel show. No bullshit, no script, no uh, creative editor, no lawyers. Okay, it's just the way my show is now. I'm in charge of the creative uh, control, whatever you want to call it. All right, I'm not into any sponsorship agreements. I only recommend products I use and I fucking like. So I say what the fuck I want to say. I do what the fuck I want to do. You know, Anthony Bourdain seemed to think that he had creative control over his show and he's fucking working for CNN the most goddamn liberal people on earth no you didn't have creative control dog so I would rather my shit be a one man travel show to the end of the time than for somebody to come in and offer me fucking money with conditions no it don't work like that so reality probably says in 20 years I'll still be holding a goddamn cell phone talking to it just like this and I don't fucking care. You know, if you're entertained or you learn something or you get inspired or you see a place you've never seen before, hey, it's worth it for me. But if you got an extra dollar a month, go down and click that Patreon link. Give me a fucking dollar a month. I'm on the way to a million, all right? And if you're broke, don't got a credit card, fuck, just enjoy this shit for free. Yeah.
Thousand body in there. God bless them. Generally, thank you so much, sir, for the compliments. Thank you. Oh, 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 
Straight, not available. Okay. We're gonna try to review that one. We're gonna review it. Maybe. Maybe. Because stick around. They're gonna find the lyrics in the world and the chords in the okay. world. <laughs>
That band right there is bad to the bone. That's almost like one of the best shows in Padia. And if you haven't guessed it, the Filipino band. Well, you got the one white guy on drums. I, I would say he's from America, but I'm not sure. I'll, I'll find out. But um, folks from the Philippines, I mean, what a great show. 
great band, great performance here at Hooters. That was the first set. I think they're gonna do four sets. And right now it's low season, so she said they're playing Thursday through Sunday. When it's high season, they're playing every night. Four sets. Wow, what a great show. Great vocals, a lot of energy. Wow. She said they've been here for a year. Apparently, I just don't come here late enough at night to realize they had a great band. Holy shit, I am looking forward to the second set. I made a rookie mistake though. Well, it is and it's not. When I left my spot over there, I only bought 2,000 baht. Cause I said, hey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go drink my margarita, have some Mexican food. Drink one beer here, and then take you guys for a tour on Walker Street. Usually when I roll out, I, I take the least amount of cash that I think I need in case I get rolled by a lady boy, you know, pass out. Worst shit has happened. So I gotta check my funds. But I'm gonna tell you this, if I run out of funds, I'm, I'm going back to my spot, getting some more money, I'm coming back, I'm watching all sets of this band right here. And every set is gonna be in this video. And if you're not into listening to great music, maybe the audio is not good, I don't know. I don't understand that. If the audio is not great on the iPhone, I got it. I will come back with my Sony camera and it will have great audio. But folks, I'm including all this footage, I don't give a fuck. If this video is four hours long, when you come home at six, hit play. And if it runs till 10 until you gotta go to bed with your wife, so be it. Put this shit on the big screen in the living room, hit play. Because I promise you, this band is on time. Only reason they're playing in this bar is because nobody from Hollywood or from Nashville or wherever has sat down and listened to the energy of this band here collectively. But I'm gonna have to pick a favorite. The girl on the right is like a Filipino version of like a Aretha Franklin, Tina Turner, Madonna all combined. A lot of energy, great vocals. So stay tuned for the second set. It's well worth it. If the audio is not perfect, blame fucking Apple, don't blame me. Alright, well you can blame me, because I do have a Sony that's got great audio. I'll bring it tomorrow night. I'm going to catch all four sets. I'm going to take you for a quick walk down Walker Street. Then i got to get home by 1 o'clock to watch UFC. And then I plan tomorrow to take you down on a big ass motorbike tour. Going to be stressful for the dog. Luckily, I've got some tough travel clothes in. I'm wearing Carhartt gear. It's a tough job. I got tough clothing. And I'm dedicated to bringing you 100% pure entertainment. Me and my iPhone in this one man travel show. Don't forget to subscribe right down in there in the right hand corner of your screen. Smash that Overstay Road sign. You could change your life, my friends. Be right back because I got a piss. Band's taking a break. Get ready for the second set. Welcome back to our second set. And then you're still with the mafia. With the mafia. You know, one of the big people. And you're still with the mafia.
to Mr. John.
Thank you so much. That was a real one. Hell oh, yeah, my friend.
Yes, yeah, sing, Krat. Sing, ha.
Mars. That's not so please nice. sing with us. Woo! We'll be right back after a few minutes of break. DJ! I'm gonna tell you what, people. That's the that's the best fucking band and the best show in Pattaya right now. My Filipino friends, lead singer. I'm calling her Madonna. She's a Filipino Madonna. She's from Angeles City. Great vocals. So much energy. Always smiling. Wow. So right now, I'm counting my beers. I'm checking my bill because when I left my crib, I didn't bring, I didn't listen to my old man's advice. My old man always says, you know, when you go to the bar, don't go out half loaded. So his philosophy was back in the day, if, if, if you thought you needed a hunter, take 500, motherfucker, because you never know what's going to happen. Well, I'm a cheap bastard. I said, all right, I'm not taking no more than 2,000 in case I get stupid and I'm forced to come home. But I'm up in here counting fucking beers now. Fuck that. There's a million dollar band on stage and I'm counting fucking beers? I should have listened to my old man. If you're going out, don't go out half cock. You're going out partying, going to the bar, you think you need 100? Take 500, motherfucker. Go big or go home. My old man, I love that motherfucker. He's a straight up player from way back. They say the apple, don't fall too far from the tree. I'm proud of my dad, I love that dog. Dad, I love you. He taught me a lot of everything I know. Me and him are just alike. He's my best friend in the world. Best father anybody could ask for. I love you, dad. If it weren't for you encouraging me when I was a young shithead, I would still be a young shithead. All right, Dad, love you, man. Hope you're having a great day over there in America because I'm gonna have a great night here in Pattaya, Thailand, at Hooters with this Filipino band. Can't wait till you come join me. Love you, Dad. Welcome to our third. To the gentlemen at the back. Are you yeah. over there? Yeah. 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 Good evening, guys. Welcome back here to And to our Philippine uh, co co All the way from Malaki and Armita. No, he's from. Arinon Kundo. Tondo. The Arinon Kundo. Arinon Tondo. He's from Arinon Tondo. Are you sure? Yes. Do you know my father then? If you are Harry Nantondo, do you have 2,000 baht? Tombo. <laughs> you should have. No. She you don't have. Only had a peso. Harry Nantondo have lots of money, you know why? The pesos in um, Tondo. Alright. Mm. Here's our person for that. Here, Harry Nantondo. Tondo.
America, where are you from? Where? Where? Welcome back. So guys, if you have any requested song, please just let us know. As long as we know it, we're going to give it to you guys, okay? Baby, I know you're giving 2,000 bucks, so we need to listen to you. <laughs> what song do you want? For 2,000 bucks? It's a ghetto. No, you don't know anymore. You don't know the song anymore. Pink Floyd, right? Anyone from Ramstein, but you don't know any <laughs> any, any Anything from German song. Like German song. German song. No, 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 no. Oh, we don't want German. Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. He wants Pink Floyd. I want for 2,000 bucks. Hey, he said Elvis. 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 In the oh, ghetto. Don't ask about Elvis. He's died long time ago. <laughs> That's a great song. I love that. You know it. So, yeah. I don't think they know that though. Well, we're around to find that. <laughs> Down in so the ghetto. In the ghetto. That's the oh, most, one of the most beautiful songs in history. Oh, fuck me. I love it. Mm -hmm. We should be here.
Love God, baby. So We're only one part of it.
Yo, people, listen. Holy shit, these Filipinas. These Filipinas are rocking out this fucking Hooters here in Patty. The band as a whole. If I had a fucking club in America, I would fight through the paperwork and I would pay them the money to come to America because I would fucking make my money back about 10 times. So the band is awesome. Everybody has got their own little fucking style, their own brand. From uh, the guy on keyboards, great vocals on him, the guitarist, and I'm not trying, I'm not trying to be a smart ass, but the white guy on the drums, Vanilla Ice. And I say that lovingly because I grew up with Vanilla Ice. I love fucking Vanilla Ice. He's got the Vanilla Ice going on great on the fucking drums. So I'm not saying that to disrespect you, dog. But I don't know your name, but I know your brand. Your brand is Vanilla Ice. And I got these two Filipinas rocking it out on fucking lead vocals. Holy shit. Both these Filipinas are great. But my girl on the right, you are like the Madonna, Aretha Franklin. Girl, you got, some, you got a spark about you. But when I see you up there straining and sweating, Entertaining this crowd. Oh my goodness. Shit. Everybody is wonderful. This is a great band, a great show, one of the best shows in Patia. Right here at Hooters. Who the fuck? I hate corporate America, so for me to give Hooters fucking credit for anything is uh is stretching it. But I have to give credit where credit is due. I don't believe in hypocrisy or bullshit. If you come to Patty of Thailand, you better come to Hooters. Right here on Beach Road near, I think it's Soy 13. Best fucking band in the strip right here. The hidden fucking superstar, the girl on the right. Vanilla Ice back there. Filipino guys with fucking voices. Fucking cold beer at a reasonable price. And the food, listen, Hooters food is fucking Hooters food. I'm not gonna see it's bad, it's corporate food. It's good. So you want a dining experience where you can watch traffic on Beach Road, ride that fucking bull over there, hurt your back, listen to this band, eat some fucking American food, and drink some cold ass beer. Goddamn, come to Hooters. And I have to say this, I have never recommended a fucking Hooters before in my life, any location in the fucking world. The only Hooters in the world I recommend that you come to, Hooters Patty of Beach Road. It's the way it is. I'm a fucking realist.
Yeah. 
folks, I'm rolling out of fucking Hooters. I'm telling you, look back here. I'm fucking rolling out of this motherfucker. And you know what? I am fucking smashed. Take a look over here, folks. This is fucking beautiful right here. All these boats out here on Patia Bay. It's fucking beautiful on Patia Bay. But you know what? I gotta go. I gotta keep going forward. I'm not dealing with the coconut girls. I'm headed towards Walking Street because I, I promise you. I promise you that I would take you up and down Walking Street. Some of my friends, I got to tell you. This one wanna tell you. You know, I'm gonna walk back down Walking Street. I got like a few a few dollars in my pocket on purpose. And I'm probably gonna have a beer or else I might just go home. But I hope you uh, had a good time hanging out with me. I went and ate some Mexican food, drank some margaritas, and went to Hooters, like I said. I only plan on drinking one beer in Hooters, but when that band kicked it off, holy shit. Best show in Patia. And I just took you for a walk down Walking Street, but it's time for me to go home. And I have already missed the first part of UFC. Thanks for being a subscriber. Hope you're having a great time wherever you're at in the world, folks. See you on the next video.